Hello, this is Jack Jackson back again. In this video, we're going to continue our look at descriptive statistics, and we're going to be talking about how to identify outliers. Now, what are outliers? Well, outliers are exceptionally uh, and un unusual data values. So these will be data that are extremely high or extremely low, way higher than the rest of the data, and way lower than the or or, or way lower than the rest of the data. Um, so what should we do with outliers? Well, first of all, we should identify them if they're in the data and report them. Now, we should try to decide what the cause of the outlier is. Now, there are a couple of things that could happen here, two or three things here. One is it could be bad data. Somebody actually wrote the wrong number down. Uh, it could be a clerical error. Uh, maybe they transposed the digits. Maybe they just copied it down wrong. Maybe they got the decimal place in the wrong place or something some kind of clerical error or typographical error. Uh, if, if you can identify that that's the case, then just throw that out as a bad measurement and analyze the data without it. So it's not a legitimate data value. Now, another possibility is that it wasn't any error in measurement. It is a legitimate um, measurement, but then there are a couple of possibilities. It could be explainable as not really belonging in the distribution. In this case, we might throw it out as well. For example, let's suppose we're measuring salaries of a company and we've got them all thrown in together. We may find out that the that there's a, a CEO that's making you know, millions of dollars that's way above the rest of the company and everybody else is, is, is sort of down together. You should, be able, should separate the CEO out. Of course, then you're still not, don't say it's the salaries of everybody in the company, but say it's the salaries of everybody except for the CEO, or maybe upper management might be separate. So, so you might want to actually pull that out as a separate group or as an individual and say that's not part of the other rest of the data that we want to analyze. And then sometimes it's legitimate, but you just really have a hard time explaining it. Um, so if that's the case, do your best, but at least report it and identify it. Now, how do we identify something as an outlier? Now, the first method, I've got two methods here. One uses the quartiles and one uses the mean and standard deviation. The method using the quartiles is by far the uh, most common method, uh, and it's due to Tukey, who w was the inventor of the box plot. So this, is, uh, this uses those quartiles. So if a value is more than one and a half uh, interquartile ranges beyond the box of the box plot, it's an outlier. So how do we do that? Well, first compute the quartiles in the interquartile range and then compute these what we call fences. L2 uh, is the, oh, I'm going to call this one just L1. Okay, that's better. So these are called the upper and lower fences. And for method one, the lower fence, L or L1, is Q1 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So once you've found the Q1, you have to, of course, remember the interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. It's that distance. And then we want to take that, that length, that's the length of the box in the box plot, Multiply that by one and a half and move that far below Q1, and that's the lower fence. And anything that's below that is an outlier. Similarly, we find an upper fence. I'll call it U for a method one or U1 or just U, the upper fence. And it's the same distance, 1.5 times the interquartile range, but then it's above the, uh, the, the uh, third quartile. Now, an alternate method uh, that I'm going to give you is using the mean and standard deviation. So basically, we're going to say if the absolute value of the z-score is greater than 3, then we consider the data point an outlier. So if it's further than three standard deviations above and or below the mean, we're going to call that an outlier. So find the sample mean and the sample standard deviation and compute the upper and lower fences uh, so that would be then the lower fence for method 2 would be x bar minus 3 times s. And then the upper fence was x bar plus 3 times s. And again, if you're below L uh, or above U, then you have an outlier. 
Okay, so those are two methods of identifying outliers. For the most part, we're going to be using method one in my class for the homework. But there is another method here if you only know the mean and standard deviation and you don't know the quartiles. Now we can also do something called a modified box plot. Back when I talked about box plots, I told you we would at some point be doing a modified box plot. So here's a box plot of some data here. And if we did this as a regular box plot, well, what do we have? We have the median is right here. This one's going vertical rather than horizontal. So what does that look like? It's maybe 14. Uh, and then we've got the Q3 up here that's maybe 16 possibly. And Q1 is down here. And then the minimum is way down here, so and the maximum's up here. So if we were to do a regular box plot, this whisker would go all the way up to this maximum point. And this minimum whisker, whisker would go all the way down to the minimum point here. But a modified box plot, what it will do is, is if this is an outlier, and it says this number here at the maximum and this one at the minimum, our outliers, it puts some mark, usually like an asterisk or something like that. And then instead, you draw, instead of drawing the whisker all the way to that point, you draw the whisker to the next most, um, the highest point that's not an outlier. And you draw the whisker, the lower whisker, to the lowest point that's not an outlier. So this is the outlier, and the next lowest point is right here. This data value looks like maybe nine. And then the upper one that looks like maybe 20 here is the next to the highest, whereas 23 or something is the highest. So um, let me see if I can show you how you can visualize the, the fences on here. OK, so this kind of illustrates a little bit what we have here. Remember, this, is, this value right here is Q3, and this is Q1 the lower quartile and the upper quartile, and that distance between them is the interquartile range, or IQR. So now what we do is we take that distance, multiply it by one and a half, and we get this distance right here, which is one and a half times as big as that distance. We go it above Q3 and below Q1, and that gives us our lower fence and our upper fence here. So the upper fence is uh, Q3 plus one and a half IQRs. And the lower fence is Q1 minus one and a half IQRs. And so anything above that upper fence is considered an outlier. In this case, there was one outlier above, so that we put an asterisk there. And then had there been another one, we would put another asterisk there. Okay. And sometimes if there's a repeat, you'll even put two asterisks right next beside each other. Uh, but that was the only outlier here, and then what you do is you draw the the whisker to the near to the highest one that's under this fence, and the lower whisker goes to the lowest data value above this fence, and anything below the fence down here is an outlier. Now, typically, if you put programs such as SPSS or Minitab and you ask it to do a box plot, it's going to do this modified version of a box plot, which identifies outliers. The TI-84 and TI-INSPIRE calculators actually have the ability to draw box plots, and they will do uh, uh, modified box plots or the unmodified versions uh, at your command, depending on which one you want. Uh, traditionally, Excel was did not have the ability to draw box plots, but I think that's been corrected with the latest version of Excel. Okay, so let's see if you've understood this and maybe try to work through one of these your own, uh, on your own. So here we have some data set, uh, that we've been looking at earlier videos of this uh, hypothetical situation where we have a class of students that are selling candy boxes, boxes of candy as a fundraiser, and this is the data that we've looked at many times. So uh, actually we've done this many times before, computed a dot plot, and quartiles, and we've even done an unmodified box and whiskers plot uh, using the same uh, axes before. So, but if you don't, if you've got that before, pull it out. If you haven't, just redo this. So, get out a piece of nice graph paper, make your dot plot, 
uh, take the data, compute the quartiles, draw the dot box and whiskers plot below. This is an unmodified one, and then we'll we'll add a we'll consider what the outliers are and add mod, add a, a modified box plot next. But go ahead and do this first. So if you if you got it in front of you, great. If not, press pause. Either find where you've done it before or um, make one again. Press pause now. All right. So at this point, you're back, and hopefully you have this this uh, graph or something. Uh, maybe drawn by hand that's similar to this in front of you. So you have your your number line that's basically going from well at least from 2 to 30 because that's the minimum and maximum and we have our um, dots on here hopefully uh, nice and organized and cleanly done this way either with technology or by hand and then you have either above it up here or maybe down below you've drawn in the box plot which you see here remember it goes from the minimum to and then the whisker goes up to the uh, Q1 then you have another vertical bar at the median which is 14 then another vertical bar at the third quartile which is 16 and a whisker goes from the third quartile out to the maximum of 30 and the box there goes from a Q1 of 12 to Q1 Q3 of 16 so now the next question is, okay, this is we've done all this before. So now uh, what we'd like you to do is now identify outliers, making use of the quartiles that we've just computed, and add a modified box plot to the diagram above. So let's see if you can go ahead and do this. Uh, go ahead and do this on your own. Come back when you're done. Press pause now. Well, first of all, let's compute the interquartile range. That's Q3 minus Q1, so that's 16 minus 12, which is 4. So the Q3 minus the Q1, that's 4. 4 is the distance from here to here. The lower fence, then, is uh, Q1 minus 1.5 interquartile ranges, so that's going to be 12. Uh, lower quartile minus one and a half times four. One point five times four is is six. Twelve minus six is six. So the lower fence is at at six right here. About here. So anything below that, this guy down here will be an outlier. So the lower fence is six. The upper fence is Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. So that's 16, the upper one, uh, plus 1.5 times 4. Again, 1.5 times 4 is is uh, 6, which is the length of the box here, times 1.5. And, and add that to 6, we get 22. So the upper fence is 22, which is here. Anything above that will be uh, an outlier. So anything outside the interval from 6 to 22 is considered an outlier. What, which ones are those? Well, that's 2, 23, and 30 are considered outliers. So use that information to complete a modified box plot. Press pause now. So here's our modified box plot up here in red. So notice that the lower fence was 6, which was right here. Anything below that, which was right here, will be an outlier. So we'll put the, the asterisk there. The lowest non-outlier was actually right here at 9, and so that's where we draw our whisker to. And out any, uh, the upper fence, oh, it says lower fence, let's fix that. So the upper fence is 22. Anything above that is an outlier, so we see this 23. We put an asterisk there. The 30, we put an asterisk there. So we have a couple of overachievers and one underachiever uh, significantly overachiever and significantly underachiever there uh, on sailing and so those are outliers then the next one that's not an outlier that's the highest is 20 and so that's where we draw a whisker the box part of the box is exactly the same whether it's the unmodified or the modified now all of these labels are optional on the box plot or the um, whether it's modified or not the box plot is actually just the the little graphical part here and here, including the asterisks up here in the dot plot uh, that's modified, box plot that's modified. 
And then it also has to include the number line. It has to include this horizontal number line. It does not, of course, have to include the dot plot with it, but it does have to include this number line that we're using down here. So I think uh, that hopefully that explains pretty well what's going on with how to identify outliers using the quartiles. And it talks about how we can illustrate those on a modified box plot. So you should be ready to go do some homework on this topic now.